We here at Triple Jump are rather fond of disturbing video game enemies. Be they modern aberrations in the form of many tentacled and many mouthed bosses, or 8 and 16 bit throwbacks that still manage to raise the hairs on your neck, they all hold a special place in our hearts and have seared themselves into our brains. We've done a few videos on the topic already, but there are still so many abhorrent horror beasts out there that we simply had to do another. From the rank and rancid to the sickening and psychological, this list is literally dripping with the creep of inhuman horrors. Prepare to be seeing fleshy tentacles and dripping viscera in your nightmares for weeks to come, because once you witness these Cronenberg-esque monstrosities, you won't be forgetting them anytime soon. While none of these enemies were marketed as the stars of their respective games, they certainly left the biggest mark both figuratively and literally. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most disturbing horror game enemies of all time. Number 10. The Teacher, Little Nightmares 2. To children, the adult world is a terrifying place. It's terrifying to adults too, but at least we get to go to bed whenever we like. Unless it's a work night and you really must get up early the following morning for that big meeting and you haven't had a good night's sleep in days and… Uh, uh, where was I? Oh yes, Little Nightmares 2. Playing as Mono gives players a unique perspective on the game's dark setting. The eerily empty environments of the moor and the world outside aren't built for you. After all, they are enormous places, difficult to navigate for one so small. They're built for the grotesque adults, one of which is the teacher. With her enormous size, stern rictus grin, and constantly thwacking ruler, the teacher is terrifying enough to look at, but gets even worse when she gives chase. After slipping her gaze in the classroom, players might think they're in the clear, but a single, slight, noisy mishap sends her running their way. And while she cannot always reach Mono conventionally, she has a rather horrific trick up her sleeve. The power to elongate her neck and send her head wriggling after him like some sort of demonic snake. But all those terrible teachers you had into perspective, doesn't it? Insubordinate and churlish. Number 9. Red Chompers – Darkwood Darkwood has more than its fair share of nightmarish horrors. Set in an endless and deeply unnerving forest somewhere deep within the Soviet bloc, players must gather enough supplies and resources by day to defend their hideouts from otherworldly beasts by night. As survival horrors go, this is definitely on the we-expect-you-to-die-a-lot side of the scale. The forest is very much alive, and as a result of its spreading influence known in-game as the Plague, no living thing is safe. The Red Chomper is what happens when a human enters the final stages of the plague. They have lost all sense of humanity, seeking only to kill and consume and look as uncannily inhuman as you can get, having been split in two from head to stomach to form a new chomping mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. Don't be fooled, even though they are encountered relatively early on, they are one of the toughest enemies in the game, capable of devouring the player in only a few gruesome bites. The simpler graphics can make some of the most disgusting features difficult to discern, leaving it up to players' imagination to fill in the blanks. You'd better thank your lucky stars this game wasn't made in Unreal Engine 5, I tell you. Number 8. Twin Victim – Silent Hill 4 – The Room any of the enemies in the Silent Hill series could have found their way onto this list. The psychological and psychosexual manifestations of their protagonists' fractured psyches and innermost feelings of regret and guilt make for some truly abominable creature designs. But as unstoppably evil as Pyramid Head is, and as deeply upsetting as Abstract Daddy is, we've decided to go with Silent Hill 4's Twin Victim. This abnormally large, shambling figure, vaguely reminiscent of a pair of conjoined twins, can be seen multiple times throughout the game. Just gazing upon its frightful form, two fused baby heads sticking out of a shabby, feathery cloak and standing upright on a pair of oversized arms is enough to make most players turn and run. But the most disturbing thing about the twin victim is that it won't attack the player unless attacked first. Instead, it will simply stand there, whispering to itself and pointing directly at protagonist Harry Townsend and, by extension, at the player. Symbolically, the heads are thought to represent two of antagonist Walter Sullivan's youngest victims, twins Billy and Miriam Locaine, and it's a sight sure to haunt your nightmares forevermore. If you want to kill the twin victims, you'll need to stomp on them while they writhe on the floor in a tantrum, not recommended by the way, with real children. Just a little heads up for you there. Number 7. Guardians – Dead Space I can't say I'd like to be transformed into any of the fleshy nightmare fuel creatures that are Dead Space's necromorphs, but if I absolutely had to pick, the Guardians would be at the very bottom of the list. In his attempts to find out what happened on the planet-cracking ship, the USG Ishimura, as well as find his missing girlfriend, protagonist Isaac Clarke has to deal with… 
a lot. Whether it's malfunctioning machinery, massive asteroids, or the good old necromorphs themselves, everything is trying to kill him. But of all the ways he can be eviscerated, at least he never winds up fused to a wall, half alive for all eternity. This is the fate of those poor Ishimura crew who have the misfortune of being turned into guardians. Like other necromorphs, they retain certain human features, in this case a head and torso, but the rest of them has melted into fleshy sludge fused with the walls of the ship. They cry and whimper when left alone, and scream when woken up, suggesting that they may have retained some of their original humanity. Either that or they still feel pain. They attack by flailing razor-sharp tentacles that used to be their intestines, and if Isaac is hit by one, he's decapitated instantly. Gruesome, but you know, at least it's quick, I suppose. Number 6. Armsies, The Forest the forest may hint at its true, terrifying nature from the outset, but for the most part appears to be nothing more than your run-of-the-mill survival game. That is, until players meet their first mutant. These creepy cannibals are eerie enough with their pale skin and lifeless eyes, and let the player know they're in for more than just chopping down trees. But they are only the beginning. Delving deep into the caves or surviving long enough above ground will eventually see monstrosities known as creepy mutants spawn. Just one look at these multi-limbed abominations makes it clear how they got their moniker. One of these, and perhaps the creepiest of them all, is the group of mutants known as Armsies. As you may have guessed by the name, Armsies are all arms. Like a Frankenstein's monster gone terribly wrong, Armsies appear to have been stitched together from many corpses. They lumber around, multiple arms flailing sickeningly, and have a nasty habit of destroying players' bases in record time. Oh, and they don't have heads, just a repulsive cracked open torso. Lovely. Just as disturbing is the Armsies' backstory, which suggests that they were possibly created via the fusion of a number of small children in the Resurrection Obelisk. If you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Number 5. The Rat King – The Last of Us Part 2 Rat Kings are the result of a rare but very real phenomenon in which rats living in close proximity get their tails so irrevocably tangled that they, in a sense, become one amalgamated organism. What then is the Rat King in The Last of Us Part 2? Why, it's the Cordyceps equivalent, of course. During the second half of the game, players will find themselves descending into the bowels of a long, closed-off hospital in search of medical supplies, a place where some of the very first infected were taken. That means that they were left there in the dark for around 25 years, and in that time the fungus grew and grew until it covered much of the lower floors. It also covered the bodies of the infected down there, fusing them into the scenery and to each other. Yes, this despicable thing is made up of multiple stalkers, clickers, and a bloater all jammed together, most of which are still very much alive. When players encounter this putrid, writhing mass of twitching arms and gnashing jaws, a tensely terrifying boss fight ensues. And it doesn't end when the Rat King goes down. Oh no! One of the stalkers pulls itself free of the amalgamated corpse and keeps on fighting. Uh, and there goes my lunch. Number 4. The Baby – Resident Evil Village Raising a baby is tough work. I've got a tiny cat on my lap at the moment, and I tell you what, it's so hard. The little screaming bundles of joy seem hell-bent on causing themselves as much harm as possible, but we imagine it gets even tougher when your baby is kidnapped by an evil mold-obsessed cult. You've got to hand it to Resident Evil Villagers Ethan, and he's going to need all the hands he can get, for holding it together as well as he does. Can't imagine what kind of stress dreams he's been having, though. But wait! We don't have to imagine. When players descend into the underbelly of House Beneviento, they witness his nightmares firsthand, and they come in the form of a truly terrifying demon baby. This baby, if you can call it that, resembles a monstrous fetus with slimy reddish skin, twisted arms, grasshopper-like back legs, and an enormous gaping, wailing mouth. Stripped of their weapons, the player cannot fight back and must try their best to outrun this shuffling grotesquery, all the while listening to the squelch of its bloody mass crawling along behind them and its distorted cries of Mama and Dada. And if they're caught, they're swallowed whole in a very unsettling cutscene. Ugh, it's enough to put anyone off being a parent. Oh, and if that's not scary enough, try playing this section in VR. Number 3. Lisa P.T. Often heralded as one of the scariest games ever made, despite only being a demo, P.T. has nevertheless left its terrifying mark on the world. 
As someone who enjoys being able to sleep at night, perhaps it's for the best Silent Hills was never released, because I don't think I'd ever be able to handle anything scarier than P.T.'s Lisa, and knowing Kojima and Del Toro, there was plenty worse to come. With her mouldering, corpse-like visage, one sightless eye and bloodied rag of a dress, Lisa is the quintessential haunting ghost. That would be scary enough, but what elevates her to the realms of the truly disturbing is how she moves and how she sounds. Lisa constantly watches the player from windows, from the landing, from the other side of the corridor, but she doesn't stand still. She judders and shakes erratically as if phasing in and out of this reality, her torso contorting horrifically all the while. And she moans. But unlike normal ghosts, these are horrible, distorted sounds, like listening to someone in great pain through a poorly tuned radio. If that's not bad enough, she's always right behind the player, waiting. Great. It looks like I'm never sleeping again. Thanks, Kojima. Number 2. Robot Head Soma Soma is a dark game, and not just because it's set at the bottom of the ocean. It plays with many unsettling science fiction themes, from unrestricted AI to the nature of the soul and what truly makes humans human. Its creature design, horrible, pulsating amalgamations of flesh and metal, reflects this. Frankly, any of the game's monsters could have made this list, but it's Robot Head that gets our nod of disapproval. Why? Because unlike the other monsters, Robot Head retains a little too much of her former humanity than we're comfortable with. A woman's corpse reanimated by the WoW AI, an arm and leg have been replaced by pincer-like prosthetics, her neck replaced with a glowing tube, and half of her head has been replaced with hunks of metal. Even worse than her appearance, however, is the fact that part of her still seems to be alive in there, fighting for control. When left alone, she will hold her head, weeping, clearly in a state of intense distress and existential pain. But if the player makes too much noise, her WoW side kicks in and she will start aggressively attacking, all the while her human side tries to fight back, screaming, stay away and leave me alone. Maybe someone ought to do something about AI now, before it's too late. Number 1. Lament. Evil Within 2. There are many disturbing enemies in the Evil Within series, many twisted abominations of fused bodies and far, far too many limbs. We could have covered any of them today, from the spider-like Laura to the malformed mess known as the Effigy, but the most disturbing of them all, and that's really saying something, has to be the Evil Within 2's Lament. While wandering around the residential district of Union or the sewers, players may be unfortunate enough to encounter a grotesquely shambling malformation of merged body parts and sickly flesh, vaguely resembling an emaciated woman, only one who has been stretched too tall and is clawing at itself with multiple skeletal arms. Yeah, it's not nice. Even worse, if it gets a hold of a player, it will begin screaming manically and vomit a veritable tidal wave of acid into their face, killing them instantly. Not even a gas mask will keep players safe from this deluge of caustic bile. Laments are tough enemies, and so are best avoided, but even sneaking past them is a hair-raising experience as players have to put up with their erratic, twitchy movements and listen to their inhuman, burbling screams. If anything, I'm the one lamenting playing this game. I haven't slept for weeks, I'm so tired. <laughs>